What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Mayfix Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Peter B. Parker. And so here we have the Mayfix Peter B. Parker posed and out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through his accessories. Peter B. Parker does come with four different head sculpts. We do get an unmasked head which looks really nice. I do like the detailing on it. We get a head where the mask is on the top of his head, which also looks really nice. I like the detailing on the mask there. We get two different masked heads. We do get the normal mask where the eyes are wide open. And then we do get a masked head where it's almost quizzical looking. He also does come with several sets of hands. We do get a pair of fists. We get a pair of relaxed grip hands. We get a pair of whip hands. We get a pair of hands for holding the pizza. We get a pair of hands for holding his mask. We get a pair of hands for holding the web. We get a pair of hands where his fingers are splayed open. We do get a pair of wall crawling hands. And then we get a pair of wall crawling hands with a magnet inside them. He also does come with a right hand that has a coffee mug which looks really nice. He also does have a loose mask which does fit in the mask holding hands. He does come with a slice of pizza. He also does come with two different sets of shins. We do get the spider suit shins, which look really nice. And those do come with magnetic feet. Then we also do get bear shins, which also look really good. Those do come with the boot and the converse. And then we also do get a pair of bear feet with those. He also does come with his trench coat, which looks really nice. I love the detailing in it. It looks so nice. And it does fit the figure nicely with a wireframe for posing. And then he also does come with his sweatpants, which look really nice. If you've ever owned a pair of sweatpants, these look perfect. And then finally, he does come with a set of webs. He does come with two webs that fit around his wrist that are short, two webs that fit around his wrist that are long, and then two webs that you can have in the web holding hands. Other than that, Peter B. Parker doesn't come with anything else. So let's actually move on to his details. And so here we have a closer look at Peter B. Parker, and I think Mayfax has done a phenomenal job with this figure. There is something a little bit off about the head that I can't quite put my finger on it, that it's not 100% likeness to the movie, but it's still a very good likeness to him, and I think they knocked it out of the park. I really do like the fact that they added the 5 o'clock shadow. That's a really nice detail. It's not too strong, but it is very noticeable. Really do like the tuft of hair coming down over his head face. That's a really good detail, and I like the fact that he does kind of seem like he's sad or broken. That's one thing that they did capture really nicely with this figure. Then you can see his hair is nicely parted. And is it me, or does he kind of look like Andrew Garfield? Maybe that was something to note in the movie, I don't know. But he does kind of bear some resemblance to Andrew Garfield, so that is interesting. Now I do have him with the unmasked head. The masked heads do come with an extra neck piece where the... Uh, cowl is going all the way up to his head, so that's really cool. Taking a look at his spider suit, this is a very nice spider suit, but it does have some issues that we do need to talk about. For starters, the sculpt is amazing. There is so much sculpt work in this suit, as you can see. The web lining is all sculpted in. There's not an instance where it's just there and then the web lines are painted in. It's all sculpted and that looks really nice. I love it when these Spider-Man figures have the sculpted webbing. I think that's much better than the printed webbing. And then I do like the spider emblem in the back. We do have like a border right here going all throughout his suit. Which I do like that. That's a nice little detail that they did capture in the movie. Spider emblem on the front also looks really good. Now one issue I do have is the consistency of the web design. As you can see right here on his abdomen, the webs look very consistent even right here on his lower abdomen. But then we move higher up and mm, they kind of didn't miss the mark there. And then we get really heavy inside the butterfly joint right here. Uh, is it heavy? Yep. The butterfly joints have very heavy web lines painted in them. And then you can see right here on his neck, we do have some heavy webs and then some and not so heavy. And that's just one thing that does bother me about this figure is the consistency. I kind of wish that the webs were a little more consistent. Maybe if they were like that, I'd be a little bit happier. But you can see definite consistency issues here. 
and it is quite noticeable throughout the figure. You can see there are some instances where they went a little overboard with the black wash and then some instances where it looks like they didn't even try it, especially right here. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something to note about this figure. Now, another thing to note about this figure is the differentiating plastics. His torso, and I mean his entire torso from the chest, midsection, and pelvis, and even his thighs, they're all molded in blue plastic, and that looks really nice. Now, his arms, however, are molded in red plastic with the blue painted. Now, at first glance, you really can't notice a difference, but then you get to something like this, where you see the glossiness and then the matte finish right here. This is obviously blue paint and this is blue plastic and it's very noticeable right here because you see the blue hinge right there so that's blue plastic. This is red plastic painted blue. I kind of wish they either went with a completely red base or a blue base and then just stuck with that and in my honest opinion they should have done blue because the red paint looks really solid. The red plastic kind of looks a little cheap to be 100% honest in. That is an issue I didn't notice with this figure. It's not a deal breaker, but that's something to keep in mind when purchasing this figure is that the consistency is going to be a little bit different figure to figure. Like even on his boots right here, you can see how heavy these webs are. Not so heavy. I think these are perfect. These are a little bit too heavy. Yeah, this one probably has the best webbing throughout the entire costume. This one's a little bit heavy, heavy handed, and that's not really nice. But overall really like the detailing in the suit you can see the basketball texturing right here and it's not really basketball texturing but it resembles basketball texturing and not only does it have texturing on the blue it has texturing on the red i would really love to see mafex tackle the ps4 spider-man costumes i think they would knock it out of the park with the with this amount of detailing but yeah this is something to note with this figure it's just the differentiating plastics and consistency other than that, the detailing is beautiful, especially with this face. It's a really nice uh, melancholy face that kind of looks defeated, but he still has a purpose in life. So I really do like that. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually get him posed to other figures you may have in your collection. And so here we have Peter B. Parker posed next to a Marvel Legend Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Peter B. Parker posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Peter B. Parker posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And finally here we do have the Into the Spider-Verse Peter B. Parker posed next to the Mafex Into the Spider-Verse Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually run through his articulation now. Peter B. Parker does have some pretty good articulation. It is a little bit hindered just because of the design. He is a pretty chunky Spider-Man. I kind of wish that this was a little bit chunkier, but eh, that's neither here nor there. So moving on to his articulation, he does have a dumbbell joint at the head, which does let him look up and down. Does tilt his head side to side really nicely. I do like that, and it does turn left and right. We get a ball joint here at the base of the neck, which does let him look up even further. And then he can look down even more. Does tilt side to side, so I do like that. And if you really want, that neck portion does rotate as well. He does have, and I did check this, it's a ball joint, butterfly joint. Yes, that's a butterfly joint, that's a ball joint. So it does pivot up and down, pivot side to side swivels side to side and goes up and down it's a really interesting design and i'm finally glad i figured out how they do this it's a really nice ball joint here in the shoulder then then we get that up and down movements front and back movement then we get a ball joint into a ball socket here in the shoulder although it's a really tight cup right here so you're mainly just going to get a swivel right here as well as hinging out that's a little bit unfortunate, but I still like this design. It moves around no problem. Then we do have a bicep swivel, double bend at the elbow, working really nice. Probably the worst joint on this figure is this ball joint in the wrist. It's not as well hidden as the other figures, which is unfortunate, but it does have up and down movement. We can rotate that joint to have in and out movement, and of course it does rotate on that peg. We have a double ball joint here at the torso, which does lean back about that far doesn't lean too far forward unfortunately but he does pivot side to side 
and you can see just all that nice movement and of course rotation. Then we do get another ball joint here at the waist which does lean back and he does have more of a belly that way so if you want him to be a little out of shape you can do that and I think that's perfect for this figure. Now it leans forward about that far which isn't the best especially for a Spider-Man figure but we gotta give him some credit he's out of shape and leaning side to side no problem. Legs are on drop down ball joints so they do hinge down go out to the side kick forward about that high which is pretty good for a man of his size and uh, athleticism I should say we do have a thigh swivel up high a uh, double bend here at the knee works pretty good giving us better than 90 degrees and you can accidentally pull this off because this is an interchangeable part as you can see so if you're not too too careful with this you might accidentally pull this off just be aware that it pulls off, it doesn't like just tab off, you have to be a little ginger with it. You have to, or he also does have a hinge in the ankle going back and forward quite a bit. You just got to be careful that you don't pull his foot off, it's really easy to do that because of the interchangeable feet. It does rotate here at the ball joint, it does have a swivel here for rock your ankle, and then we do have a toe hinge so overall Peter B. Parker has some pretty good articulation especially for a man of his stature so with that out of the way guys let's actually get him posed for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review and so here we have the Mafex Peter B. Parker pose for my final thoughts and overall I think Mafex has nailed the look for Peter B. Parker from the Into the Spider-Verse movie. There is one thing that I do have against this figure and that is consistency. Consistency along the web lines is something that is really, really hard for companies to do with Spider-Man figures apparently. They either tempo the lines on or they sculpt them on and they really don't shade them in. This is one example of what happens when they're not as consistent as they could possibly be where you have some areas of the web that are darker than others and some that don't even have paint in them. Other than that, I still think this is a fantastic figure. The amount of accessories he comes with is perfect for Peter B. Parker. And I think the only two accessories that I would have included with this figure would have been the soda cup and a little bag of fries. I think that would have been so much better for this figure. I still like the fact that he comes with pizza and the mug. I just think he should have come with the soda cup as well as a little carton of fries that would have been so funny but overall really impressed by this figure the hands work perfectly on this figure I haven't had any issues with joints or squeaky tight loose joints everything you would expect a spider-man figure to do this guy can somewhat do most of it he is a little bit out of shape and the fact that they made the figure with that same articulation in mind does lend to this uniqueness of this figure and the amount of detailing on him is phenomenal. If you're a fan of the Into the Spider-Verse movie, you're gonna love this figure because it's such a unique Spider-Man that we really don't get too many figures of Peter B. Parker. I know Sentinel is working on one and then Marvel Legends did their very own, but I think this is the best of those because he comes with the soft goods that look really nice. I especially love those sweatpants. And the fact that he comes with the full Spider-Man suit is another plus for this figure. If you are looking to get Peter B. Parker, he, he will run you about $100 if you get him domestically, $80 if you get him in, through an import website, but you will end up paying shipping and import fees for that. So either way, you're looking to spend about $100 for Peter B. Parker. With that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, Go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other Mafex, Spider-Man, and Marvel Legend videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you'd like to see me review, let me know down in the comments. And if it fits in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.